and my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I am super duper excited because I can finally show you this stitch that I've been working on. This is the wavy waffle stitch. Yes, it incorporates two things that I really like, the texture of the waffle stitch and the sort of zigzagginess of a chevron stitch. And when you put them together, this is what I came up with. And before I go any further, I want to give a big, huge thank you to my pattern testers for helping make sure that this pattern is all good and up to snuff and everything because the pattern is going to be available on my Etsy store. Link in the description box down below. Yeah. So going to give a little bit of a pan around here so you can see the sort of ziggy zaggy quality of the stitching and it's got a tremendously lovely squishy texture now because this is a t heavily textured stitch it is a little bit of a yarn hog not going to lie so i opted for a lightweight yarn and i used doo -doo -doo, this is burnett baby sport it is a weight of three yarn you know, like I said, I didn't want to go terribly heavy on the yarn weight. So it is a weight of three. It's 100% acrylic. And yes, the yardage helps. It's over a thousand yards. Now this video is not sponsored, but I like to let you know what it is that I use in case if you want to duplicate the results. Also, because this is such a heavily textured stitch and I wanted it to still have some nice drape, I decided to use a 5.5 size I crochet hook. You can, of course, use whatever works best for you, naturally. And, well, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Alrighty, now, first things first, the base chain. Now, I'm going to be using the same size hook and the same yarn for today's example. For the base chain, you are going to need a multiple of 23 chains plus an additional seven chains. So we're going to be doing today a fairly long swatch. Now, the reason why is because this is not a beginner, easy level pattern. It's not hard either. I would say it is sort of an intermediate middle level. Okay. If you're familiar with the waffle stitch, that will definitely help you. Um, now, as far as what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing three multiples of 23 stitches. Um, and so that's 69 stitches plus an additional seven stitches. So that comes to a total of 76 chains. Now, of course, you can make this as wide or as narrow as you want to. However, what I would as I always do suggest, do a swatch first, especially because since this is a chevron type pattern where it goes up and down with ziggy zaggies, you have your hills and your valleys, and it sort of condenses and scrunches the width of your chain in sort of like an accordion. So what you think is going to be a really wide width, it sort of gets whoop, scooched in. So you are probably going to need more multiples of 23 than you would initially think. So it is a good idea to do a swatch first, see what width you end up with, with the number of multiples that you go with, and then you can ascertain how many multiples you would need for the finished width that you're going for, for your actual finished project. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So to recap, you need a multiple of 23 chains plus an additional seven chains. Get your base chain started, and I, I, I shall see you shortly. Okie dokie. Okay, row one, the easiest row of all. With our base chain here, going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And I just prefer going into the top loop of the V so to speak, and do my double crochet. And then quite simply, just double crochet 
a double crochet into each and every chain all the way across to the very end of your base chain. That's it. That's all you have to do. And I'm going to spare you doing over 70 some odd doubles here, but that is all you need to do is just a double into the fourth chain from the hook and work your way across. So I'm going to do the rest of this initial row off camera, and I will see you in row two. Alrighty, row two. This is where the fun begins. So after we have our foundation of double crochet stitches, well, this is where we're going to start to incorporate the idea of the peaks and valleys and the ridges and all that fun stuff. So starting off with a chaining up of three. This is going to count as our first double crochet. And then not around this post, but the second post, a front post double crochet. So basically wrapping around, going through the front of the post, pulling up a loop, pull through two, and pull through two. So that is our first post. Then into the next stitch, we're going to create a peak, if you will. So into that next stitch, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. So I got a double, chain one, and a double. So basically, this is, like I said, it's going to create a peak. So at the edges, we're going to have peaks, and then we're going to approach valleys. So next stitch, this next post, we're going to do another front post, double crochet stitch, and two regular doubles in the next two stitches. And we're going to do that a total of three times. So we've got the post, two stitches. And then another front post. And then two regular doubles. One. And two. So we have, like I said, that's the, the increase. So we've got post, two doubles, post, two doubles. I need one more grouping of a post and two doubles. So around that next post, front post, and two doubles following thereafter. Okay, and then finish up the grouping with another front post double crochet to sort of seal the deal. Then we're going to create a valley. So these next two stitches here, we're going to double crochet them together. So yarning over, going in, pulling up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, going into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, Pull through two, and then pull through all three. So that is our decrease. This is going to create a valley. Now we're going to need to do what we just did, but in reverse. Don't worry, it's painless. So the next stitch, this next post right here, front post, and double into the next two stitches. We're going to do that three times. Okay, so we've got one grouping, then front post and two doubles. Okay, front post and two doubles.
There we go. So if we look back, that's where we did our decrease. So front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles. So that's three groupings, if you will. Then cap it off by doing the next stitch is going to be a front post double. And then in the next stitch, we're going to do another increase, just like when we first started. So in that next stitch, it's going to be a double chain one and a double in that same stitch. So double chain one and double. So this is going to be another peak, another hilltop. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing as we proceed. Now, the reason why I'm doing more than one multiple is because even though you know, this makes sense to me. I do want to be thorough and I want to take my time with you guys so that you guys can, you know, fully understand what it is that I'm doing. So let us proceed. So I'm going to do a front post in the next stitch. There we go. And a double into each of the next two stitches. And we're going to do that three times. So front post, two doubles, then a front post, and two doubles, a front post. and two doubles. And I'm going to double check my work. Airing on the side of caution. Okay, so this was our increase. Post, two doubles, post, two doubles, post, two doubles. Okay, and then we need to cap this off with a front post. And we need to do a decrease, a valley. So that's double crocheting the next two stitches together. Like so. And then we're going to work our way up from the valley onto a hilltop. So next stitch, it's a front post. And then two doubles. Front post, two doubles, front post, and two doubles. If I am not mistaken, it's easy to lose track, so that's why especially initially, I do double check my work. Okay, let's take a quick gander here. Okay, so going back here, you can see this is where we did our decrease. So front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles, front post, two doubles. Okay, and then again, need to sort of bookend by doing a front post. And we've reached the, the peak. So next stitch, it's going to be an increase of a double, chain one, double in that same stitch. And this will create another peak. And we still have one more to go where we're going to go down, create the valley, come up, and create the peak. All right, let's do it to it. Okay, so we just created this peak. So the next stitch is going to be a front post double. Then two doubles. And 
and as per usual we need to do this three times so that's once then a front post two doubles front post and two doubles There we go, double check. Okay, that is the increase with that chain one space. So post, two doubles, post, two doubles, post, two doubles, perfect. Okay, then bookend what we did with a, another front post stitch. Then for the valley, so that's double crocheting the next two stitches together. Another front post. And two doubles. We're going to do this three times. So that's the one time. Get rid of my tangly, tangly bits here. Okay, so I got the post, two doubles, post. two doubles, post, two doubles, you know, it's especially important to make sure that this row you get right. Okay, because it affects everything else. So it's the decrease, post two doubles, post two doubles, post two doubles, awesome sauce. All right, then cap it off with another front post. There we go. And then in this next stitch, we need another increase. So into that next stitch, it is a double, chain one, double, double, chain one, double. This next post, next stitch is going to be a post is what I meant to say. Okay, so we've got that front post there. And then last but not least, in between this stitch and this last stitch, I'm going to do a double in between the stitches. You could technically do your stitch into that third chain from the bottom, but quite frankly, it is a lot easier to just go into the space in between the last two stitches. And there you go. So that, my dears, that is the end of row two. Now, yes, I know, I am, I'm taking my sweet time and I'm doing a lot here because I wanna be thorough, I wanna be clear, and I want to eliminate the possibility of being confusing. So I would much rather err on the side of caution. So that being said, let us continue on with row three. Okay. Okie dokie, row three. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the waffle stitch, you know that we have ridges with the front post doubles, and then we also have ridges utilizing back post stitches, and that happens every other row. So, that being said, for row three, we're gonna be working on, this is the front side, we're gonna be working on the, the back side for row three. So this is where we're gonna incorporate front as well as back post doubles, okay? So for row three, going to start off with a chaining of three as per usual and scooch my work. Okay, 
All right, so after chaining three, going to do a back post around that second post there. So going around, after yarning over, going around the back and around that second post, back post, double. There we go. So we're creating a bit of a ridge there. And then skipping this stitch, we're gonna go right into our increase right here. Now this is only on the edges, okay? And the reason why we're skipping this stitch is because we don't want the edge to go outward. We don't want it to expand outward. We want to maintain equilibrium with this initial um, ridge, peak, hill, if you will. So it's this first one and the last one, we're gonna be skipping this stitch right here. When we get to the end of the row, you will see what I mean. Okay, so after chaining up three, doing our back post into the chain one space, do a double, chain one, double, as per usual. So double, chain one, double. There we are. Now, because we want this side of the hill to continue to grow, we are going to work into this next stitch. It's always this one facing the edge that we omit. Okay, very important. So, going to do a front post around this next stitch. And going to do a back post in the next, and then two front posts. And that is going to be where we're doing our repetition of threes. So back post, and then two front posts. Front post, front post. And so you can see it sort of lends itself to, you know, being able to determine which is which. You know, this. This one right here is already sort of tucked behind, so you can tell oh, it's a back post. These two, they're sticking up front, so we're gonna do front posts for these. So we did a back post, then two front posts. Okay, and then we need to do that two more times. Back post. and two front posts. Okay, didn't quite get all of my plies. There we go. Another back post. And two front posts, there we go. Okay, now you can see that this is where we did our decrease in the last row. So the decreases for the valleys, basically what it amounts to is you're working with either stitch, you know, on either side of that decrease. So because this one and this one, these two stitches are back posts, we're gonna back post these two together, okay? This middle stitch, we're gonna leave it alone. So going to do a yarn over, start in on your back post, pull up a loop, Pull through two, skipping this decrease from the previous row, going to yarn over, go to that next back post, going around, pulling up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through all three loops. And that is your decrease for this particular row. It's a back post two together. Okay, and then proceeding right along, we're going to do 
to front posts. and a back post. And we are essentially going to be doing this three times. So that's two fronts and a back. Two fronts. And a back. two fronts, and a back. So we did our three groupings there. And we have reached the increase, the hill. So at this point, going to do a front post around that first double, and then into the chain space, double, chain one, double. Okay, then around that second one, we're going to do another front post. And we're going to then work our way down towards the valley once again. Alrighty. Okay, so continuing right along, we just did our increase up here and we did our front post. And then it's a back post. And two fronts, and we're gonna do this three times. And I think that for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to refer to back post double crochets as backs and front post double crochets as fronts, just for the sake of brevity. So we have a, a back and two fronts, and then a, another back and two fronts. back and two fronts there we are and we have reached the decrease point again so these next two back posts are going to be done together again omitting that middle decrease there. So yarn over, start the back, pull up the loop, pull through two, skipping that decrease going around here. So yarn over, around the back, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three. And then resuming on with two fronts and a back. Front, front, back, front, front, back, front, front, there we go, and back. Okay, we've reached the peak once again, so that's going to be a front around here, and then in the chain one space, double, chain one, double, that's double, chain one, 
and double. And then around this post here, front. There we go. And then we've got one more valley and hill to do. So back and two fronts. Okay, we've got the back and then two fronts. Back. Two fronts. Back. And two fronts. There we go. And then, of course, yes, we have another decrease. So it's two back posts together. So yarn over, round the back, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, skipping that decrease down there. After yarning over, round the back, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three, and that's your decrease. Then continuing on with two fronts and a back three times. Front. Front and back. Front. Front. and back front front and back okay we've reached the increase for this edge. So going to work this initial one with a front post. Okay, and then into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. Just gotta pull out some more yarn, sorry. Okay, so what did I do already? All right, I did a double, then I need a chain one and another double. Okay, and then, yes, we're going to skip this next stitch. Okay, we're going to skip this one, going and doing a back post around this next one here. Okay, very, very important. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. So yes, skipping this stitch going around this second to last stitch with a back post double. And then, last but not least, double crochet in between the last two stitches. And there you go. So, in a nutshell, by skipping this stitch right here and this stitch right here, but continuing to increase on this side, we still have, it sort of provides ammunition for this side to keep growing and compensating for this shrinking in the middle here, but it's not going to keep feeding stitches this way or this way, okay? I hope that that makes sense as far as the equilibrium is concerned. Now, because what we just did, we created horizontal ridges, which, you know, sort of provides the, you know, 
squishy, waffly texture that we know and love. So let's proceed, shall we? Alrighty, row four. All right, so as per usual, start off by chaining up three, and that's gonna count as our first double. And then we get to work our way across. Let me get my tail out of the way there. All right, this is going to be a wee bit easier than last because we're just going to be working with front posts and regular doubles uh, with the, the front side facing. So it's a little bit easier. A little bit of a little bit of a respite for you. So after chaining up three, around this second post here, front post, okay, and again skipping over this next double, going right into the chain one space with an increase of double chain one double. There we are. And then going to continue right along, we're gonna work these next stitches. So in between our posts, we always work two regular doubles. So I've got a post right here and I've got two doubles right here. Okay, so double into each of the next two stitches. And front post. There we go. And then two doubles. And a front. And two doubles. And a front, see it goes much faster on the right side facing. Okay, and then see we are approaching our decrease, this middle stitch right here, but still can do another double right here. Okay, and then going to do double crochet two together. So instead of doing two full doubles, we're going to go into this next stitch, start the double. So pulling up a loop, pull through two, then skipping that center decrease, going into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through all three. That is our decrease for this row. Then double into the next and front post. There we are. Two doubles and front post. Two doubles. Almost had it. And a front. And we have just about reached our next increase. So we just did the front. Next two stitches are two doubles. Double and double and then into the chain one space, double, chain one, double. Okay, next two stitches are doubles. And then a front post. Two doubles
and a front. Two doubles. And a front. Okay. And we are just about at the decrease again. So it's one double. And then two doubles together. So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. Skip the decrease from the previous row. Yarn over, go into that next stitch, pull up a loop pull through two, pull through all three, and that is your decrease over the decrease. Gonna work our way up to the next ridge. So, double into the next stitch. And front post. Now the nice thing is, is that when you're working on the, the right side, the front facing side, you can see, you know, it's like, yes, that is a front post. The front posts never change on the front side. Okay, so after the front, then we've got two doubles. And front post. Two doubles. and a front, and we reached the ridge, we reached the hill, so next two stitches are two doubles, and then we get to do the increase. So into that chain one space, double, chain one, double. There. All right, and then we get to work our way down and up one last time. Okay, so we just did our increase. Next two stitches are doubles. And a front post. two doubles, and a front post, two doubles, and a front post. There we go. And yep, we have just about reached our decrease. So it's a front post, sorry, a regular double, pardon me. We just did the front post. It's a double, then two doubles together, and then another double. So do our little double right here. There we go. Then two doubles together. So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. Skip the decrease from the previous row yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three. Then another double and continue on our merry way up towards the edge increase. So we did our double, then we do a front post and two doubles. front post, and two doubles, front post, two doubles,
There we go, and we've reached the chain one space. So into that space, double, chain one, double. Okay, now again, we need to skip this next stitch. It, you know, it, on this side, yes, it's a double, but on this one, we are skipping this stitch right here. Instead, we're going to go around this second to last stitch with a front post double. And then in, be in between the last two stitches, do a double crochet. Now, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse with a stick, but it is very, very, very important that you skip that stitch right there. Otherwise, you know, it's going to throw this all cattywampus, okay? Believe you me, I know I spent a lot of time testing this out and trying to fiddle and finagle how it all works. So you can already see that your piece is starting to do sort of a ziggy zaggy chevron effect which will become more pronounced as we keep going but you know you can see the beginnings of the the waviness doing its thing because you know as we keep increasing at the points and decreasing at the valleys you know it will have that overall chevron effect and there you go Okie dokie. So that's going to conclude the first part of this tutorial. Now overall, the pattern, it's only a six row repeat. But as always, I want to be thorough. I want to be perfectly clear as to what it is that you need to do. So that is why I'm taking my time with you guys and, you know, having as many multiples as I have because I like to be thorough, you know. And, uh, well, there you go. Also, Again, thank you ever so much to my testers for helping me make this possible because this is quite a pattern and I really love it. Wanted to share it with you guys as soon as possible and my testers helped me make it happen. So thank you guys. You guys are awesome sauce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, go to my Etsy store if you're interested in purchasing a copy of this pattern and I will put a link in the description box down below. And I want to thank all of you for joining me today and stay tuned for more. Stay tuned for part two, where we're going to do the next bunch of rows together. And I am so, I'm so delighted. I love this. Ah! All right. I know I'm gushing. I'm sorry. At any rate, you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.